Welcome to the Gospel Activist Podcast, in association with Stepping Out Ministries, where we explore how we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in our modern context. Here is your host, pastor and evangelist, Kevin Henry. Welcome back to the Gospel Activist Podcast. On this episode and the following three episodes, we're going to be looking at church covenant. What is that? We have, seem to have an idea of church membership, but it doesn't give the true picture of biblical community. And so we're going to look at today at church covenant. Before we get to today's content, though, let's invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that you're notified when we upload each new video to our YouTube channel. Or you could also view our videos through our website, steppingoutministries.com, and click on the podcast link, and then connect to either St- the Gospel Activist Podcast or the Gospel Minute. As I mentioned today, we're going to be looking at church covenant. What is it? How should it look in the church? Today we have a false idea in the church, especially congregational churches, that we need to have a membership in the church. And that really is more a government thing that's placed on churches in order to have charitable status to issue tax-deductible receipts. And while that's fine to receive that benefit, it's important to look at the Bible and what does the Bible say about church governance? How are we to form together as the church body? And so church covenant is the biblical perspective that we have about how the church are to form together in regards to unity of the body. We're going to look at several things. First of all today, we're going to look at there is the commitment to supporting the ministries of the church. If we covenant together in the church, again, it's not a matter of just the pastor doing the work or the pastors or the elders. It's the whole church together. And so there must be a commitment to supporting the ministries of the church together. We are told in Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25, that we are to not to neglect meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but to come together to encourage each other to grow in our relationship to Christ. And so that's why there must be the commitment to supporting each other in the ministry of the church. Every Christian is to support the ministry of the church. We support the ministries through the giving of our tithe, but not only just our tithe, but also sharing of our resources and the sharing of our time. If you have the mentality of that, oh, I give my money to the church and we do ministry by sending it off to missions, which is a good thing, or we pay the pastor to do the ministry, you have the wrong perspective of ministering the church. If you are a Christian, you have made the confession of faith, you've come to Jesus Christ and said, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins, and I now make you Lord of my life. You have, if you have made that confession of faith, you are a Christian, and you have the obligation in your faith, in service and love to Christ, to work with the church to do the ministry of the church. God never intended any of us to be bench warmers in the church or to leave the ministry to others, but God calls all of us in unity to do his work together using the spiritual gifts that God has given us as a work of community together. Reminded of when I worked in construction, we were building dairy barns and sometimes the roof would be so far part of a span that we had to have these beams to support the roof. Supporting the work of ministry is like supporting that roof. You have to have the right beams, you have to have the right support in order to do that work. And all of us as Christians are part of those beams in the ministry. We are called to support each other by sharing of our resources, our, our money, our time. All of us are to be a part of that. Doesn't matter your level of income, doesn't matter your level of uh, energy, we're all to work in the, in the abilities God has given us to serve in the church. Yes, there are some who are limited in what they are to do, That's fine. But in the abilities they have, they are to serve God as a part of the church in doing his work of discipleship and evangelism. 3 John 5 to 8 says, Beloved, 
it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are, who testify to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. For they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore we ought to support people like these, that we may be fellow workers for the truth. The Apostle John even says in his third letter here, that we are to send others on to do the work as we join in the ministry of work together to support each other in the work God has called us to do. The second commitment is there is to be the commitment of being involved in the ministry of the church. We support the work of the church, but that also, as I've already stated, involves being involved in the ministry of the church. Hebrews 10, 24-25 again admonishes us to stir up one another to love and good works. This means that we must encourage each other to serve God together. The ministry of the church is the responsibility of every Christian attending the local church. So don't say, Pastor, it's your responsibility to do the work if you're not willing to do the work yourself. Yes, the pastor understands that he has a work and a job to do in ministry, which is actually to equip you to do the work of ministry alongside of the whole church. In Ephesians 4, we see that God equips the church with a fivefold ministry. It tells us that God has given us the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd or pastor, and the teacher. God has given all five of these to the church to equip the church to do the work that God has called us to do. Now, in any given church, you may not necessarily have all five of those fivefold ministry, but at some point in the ministry of the church, you should see all five of those if you as the church are working in obedience to the work God has called you. Because all five of those roles are essential in the church to equip us to do the work together. On the same regard, I have developed a discipleship book on church covenant. And if you go to our website, Stepping Out Ministries, you'll be able to see that content on our website, on our resource page. And there's also a new link to our web store on Facebook. If you visit it there, you'll be able to see all our discipleship books, and we'll be adding some evangelism resources there as well in the future. On that page, you'll find our discipleship book on Church Covenant. There's the leader's guide, but also a workbook to work through as you disciple someone on Church Covenant. So I invite you, if you enjoy the content of this in the next few videos, to go check that out and get a hold of that resource, Church Covenant Discipleship Book. Thank you so much again for joining us on the Gospel Activist Podcast today. If you've been challenged and encouraged by this content, I'd like to invite you to hit the like button for this video and share it with others. Encourage others to grow in their faith and understanding of church unity and covenant together. Until next time, this is Pastor Kevin reminding you to preach the gospel anywhere, anytime, and no matter the cost. You have been listening to the Gospel Activist Podcast in association with Stepping Out Ministries. To submit a comment or question for Pastor Kevin to answer on the podcast, visit us at www.steppingoutministries.com. Thank you for listening, and we invite you to join us for our next podcast.